This morning, the ongoing crisis in public housing. An update now that the city's cut a deal to put a federal monitor in charge. And is that a prelude to a government takeover? Yet the problems of no heat and hot water persist. Now, from 42nd and 2nd, this is PIX11 News Close-Up with Marvin Scott. Good morning, everyone. There may finally be a light at the end of the tunnel for the city's beleaguered public housing developments. At least, that is the hope of the 400,000 tenants who live in NYCHA's 2,400 buildings. Many of them in deplorable conditions, without heat, no hot water, and with exposure to lead paint hazards. Mayor de Blasio, he's now made a deal with Housing Secretary Ben Carson to give the government more control over the largest public housing system in the nation. NYCHA will now be under the eye of a federal monitor who will impose strict timelines on NYCHA to fix its crumbling apartments. And the mayor has appointed Sanitation Commissioner Catherine Garcia to temporarily take over as chair of the Housing Authority. Now the question is, is this the fix everyone's been waiting for? Or is it another band-aid to pacify angry tenants? Let's find out from Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, Carmen Quinones, she's the tenant president of Douglas Houses on the Upper West Side, and my colleague Monica Morales, who's been, as her reporting has been a voice for countless tenants she has helped over this past year. So, good to have you with us. So tell me, is this federal... Uh, Action, is this what you've been waiting for, or is it a disappointment? Well, it's neither, I would say, only because we don't know who the federal monitor is. We also know the tenants are not having a lot of input into who the tenant monitor, exactly. who the monitor is going to be. Right. That's incredibly important. And um, even a monitor to fix the lead in a certain time period, to fix the mold in a certain time period, and all the other issues that you listed, it takes... Uh, good management on all levels. And I think it's going to take longer than what's been listed in terms of what the federal monitor is supposed to do. So I would say it's not always this light at the end of the tunnel. We're not even close to the end of the tunnel. Some of the corrections, there's a deadline, I think, to 2026. Right. That's but let's right. talk about the immediacy, Carmen. Well, first of all, let's talk about this monitor, okay? Because um, from my understanding now, the um, people that are fighting for to be monitor are some Republicans with real estate backgrounds who have hired lobbyists to get them in for monitors. This has nothing to do with um, any of the residents who have input. Um, this 964 regs um, is the Bible, okay? This is the Bible that... HUD and everyone is supposed to go through. And in HUD it says, HUD, um, HUD promotes partnership between residents and HAs which are an essential component to building, strengthening, strengthening and improving public housing. Strong partnerships are critical for creating positive change and lifestyle, thus improving the quality of life. But they're not following this. And I can read on and on and on, but we're not at the table. So how fair is this? Now, this stops short of what a federal judge had called for just right. months ago. He wanted a total federal takeover of the system. And here we only have now, it stops short of that. Is, is that yeah, a... I mean, I don't mind. I don't think it should be a total federal takeover. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. upset that the judge is not have to be responded to. I thought it would have been a good idea mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. have the yes. residents yes. whom all of whom respected the judge. Judge Pauly was excellent, and what they did to him was a slap in the face of 400,000 residents. He was the only one that took time to hear what the residents have to say. So this dog and pony show that they pull was to cut that out and cut, uh, definitely cut the lawsuit out. And Marvin, he was the only one that was wanting to listen, right? He took a whole day to listen, and there was testimony from dozens of residents. And I was at that announcement, Marvin, with. Um, Carson and the mayor and I got the first question and the only questions I had was number one where's the money where's the federal money and then number two uh, will the people uh, wh where's the voice of the people and those are the two big gaps that we're seeing no more Let federal money and where where's the voice of the people in this in this action okay, let's at this point let's go to that video yeah. of your questioning of Ben Carson are you going to commit to more money for NYCHA? Uh, I'm going to commit to as much money as I have to give them. But uh, <laughs> okay. do, do recognize that uh, currently uh, 
we send NYCHA 25 to $30 million a week. I like to just take politics and throw it out of the window, quite frankly. But you know, people were really shocked to see you and Mayor de Blasio getting along so well. You know, you looked like you were friends. Uh, I think we are fast becoming friends. And we spoke to Lynn Patton, the regional HUD director, who had some harsh words for NYCHA management and local lawmakers. It's falling apart because the people running NYCHA suck. And, and quite frankly, so do a lot of the elected officials who are turning this into a political football. Um, you know, with all due respect, I did not make decisions to be here or to approve an agreement that gives two craps what a mayor who's maybe running for president thinks. I'm did. also, you know, okay. don't give two craps about what council people who might be running for mayor. One. Also Friday, a press conference at a NYCHA community center in the Bronx while Mayor Bill de Blasio was talking about more funding. This happened just feet away from our PIX11 photographer. What appeared to be a heater bursting. The mayor is investing $4 million to make necessary repairs to the center, including heating systems. We also returned to the Castle Hill houses in the Bronx. They still don't have their heat. And NYCHA tells us staff are currently visiting apartments and these may be isolated issues. All right, well, we'll hear more about the situation of Castle Hill houses a little later on. But let's talk about this. This now settles a lawsuit, doesn't it, that the tenant, on behalf of the tenants, by cutting this deal with the federal government, the and it requires the city to put up $2.2 billion. Yeah, but we it, need $32, you were 32 right. billion. Dollars. That's the question you asked uh, Carson. Yeah, and I'll keep asking Secretary Carson that, because that is the biggest question, is where is the money? And, Gail, our last we were here a year ago on your show, and you said, give us the money, show us the money. And that is the bottom line. Management needs to be changed, according to Carmen and the tenants. And Gail, city leaders are saying we need more money to actually make it happen. So it's only it's only like three billion from the city, maybe five hundred million from the state when they get a monitor. That's right. how it's. So it's the old story. It's not it, enough to get the job done. There's not enough money to go around. Now this this keeps NYCHA out of uh, federal receivership. At least is is that a positive move? Would it would have been better off for the government to take full control? In all honesty. They, HUD couldn't have taken over. They just don't have the manpower to take they, It was never going to be taken over by them. Never. They could not do it. First of all, Marvin, if you mess something up, why would I take it? Why would I take uh, your garbage? I wouldn't expect okay, it. Okay, <laughs> so it was never going to be in receivership by them. They were never going to take over. Like I said, this is another horse and pony show. And the bad part about it is this is this 2.0. I don't know if you know about this 2.0, but let me tell you something. From what I'm gathering, we're headed to another Chicago if this is, if, if this is implemented. And from what I hear is that HUD is pushing this 2.0. Yeah. Uh, what we're nervous about is too much privatization. That's what we found in Chicago. We do not want that here. Uh, New York has always been proud of its public housing. Yes, we need to fix it up. We do not want to be privatized like Chicago has been. You lose all of your political power, not to, mention, exactly. not to mention you scatter folks and families everywhere, and in the end you lose public housing. And you I've, lose affordable I've housing. I've asked the mayor about that, and it's, he doesn't like that word privatization. It's public-private oh. partnership. And I've asked him point blank, will people be pushed out of their homes? And he promises that people will not be pushed out of their homes. But when you talk to people and tenant association presidents across the city like we do, they are very skeptical of public private partnership. A big controversy. You have so much more to talk about. Let's take a break and then we'll continue with this. Stay with us as Pix11 News Close Up continues. Back now in Manhattan Borough, President Gail Brewer, tenant President Carmen Quinones, and my colleague Monica Morales. Uh, last year, Mayor de Blasio pledged that he would have 250 boilers repaired last summer. Has that job been completed? In some cases, he's had some fixed and some new boilers. Even some of the new boilers now are breaking down. Um, we do, I mean, it's a little better. It can, it, it can get a lot better. But we still have a lot of apartments, especially in Douglas, um, where, where we have cold, that people are cold. Um, half of the building is warm, the other half is cold. So, you know, it is, um, we need, we need new boilers, definitely. Um, and Douglas has not gotten them. 
I think that during the cold spell, Vic, uh, Vito Masaturi, who's the general manager, has a new work rule so that the people who are repairing have to be out there on a different schedule. It's not just a, it's not a skeleton staff as it has been in the past. So there mm -hmm. are repairs done faster, but do we need the money for new boilers? Absolutely. Yeah, and it's better. It's better, Marvin, but we're still getting a lot of complaints at PIX11 on our Facebook page, and it's inconsistent heat or hot water. How would you like it if you turned on your faucet and you don't know if you have hot water exactly. to bathe your children. That's the, that's the reality for so many. I think under the federal deal, if I'm reading correctly, they have to replace 500 boilers by the end of 2026. I know, people wow. hear that and it's- Seven years from it's, now. It's, it's like, that's, you know, I mean, really? Really. And they're also supposed <laughs> to have every heat complaint finished and taken care of in 12 hours. Yeah, and the response time has supposed shortened. To. Yeah, the mayor is doing a better job. And, you know, I said, could you do, be doing an even better job? And he said, of course, we could always be doing a better job. But they, it is a better winter. Um, and I think because of the attention um, of the city officials, of the tenant association presidents, and the media, I think we're, there's a spotlight now on heat and hot water. And, and they give, know that. They know that. And I have to give credit to you, Monica. Definitely. Your, Monica makes it happen. Yes, You've yes, got yes, you yes, yes. Well, it's been a rough road. It really has. And there's so much more that still needs to be done. I think that can really, I mean, we got to give hope to our hope. viewers that they have a platform now and they have the ears of the city officials like Gail Brewer, who has been there since the beginning. City leaders are now jumping on the bandwagon, but you've been there since the beginning. And Carmen, tenant association presidents fighting for the residents and, and not being afraid. And their voice has got to be heard. That yeah, is so they important. have to be at the table. Now, you yeah. mentioned the mayor a moment ago. The mayor has now made this crusade to make NYCHA great again. Now, I've had candidates running for public advocate on here and say there should be criminal charges against the mayor. He should be held accountable for all the missteps and the mismanagement and all the problems. How do you feel about that? Should the mayor? Well, I think the mayor, the buck stops with him on NYCHA, on HPD, on the sanitation department and everything else. He is accountable. I think that the fact that he's putting in some money, I don't know this is a good deal with uh, HUD. Um, he is accountable. I don't know that he needs to go to jail over it, but I think he is accountable. Marvin, I've been saying that from day one. No one's gone to jail. You got kids with lead right now that'll never, ever, ever be the same. Never. Someone has to go to jail. That's criminal what they've done. There were and lies. It, there were lies there about the inspections that were Shola never Shola never went to jail. Why isn't Shola in jail? She falsified information, she lied to the city council, and is now one of the, the uh, has the best job in the world to one of the biggest real estate companies. Why, why aren't they in jail? If it would have been me or you, we would have been under that jail. Yeah, accountability. I've asked the mayor many times about accountability and firing, and as you know, he's lost a lot of commissioners lately. Um, and we're, we are seeing, um, he says, accountability from his administration. But... Uh, the tenants want to see more. We want to see criminal. We want to see people held accountable for real, um, meaning Except criminal yeah. charges. Except and, you know, there is still an investigation going on, and we mm -hmm. will stay on mm -hmm. it. Let's talk about that lead threat. I mean, NYCHA found almost 5,800 apartments mm. with kids under six in need of repair. They have taken care of only some of them, a small percentage, but many more have not been repaired, and they're still living under those conditions. What's being done about that, Carmen? Well, Marvin, let me tell you, right now, even in Douglas Houses, um, we're supposed to have at least 11 maintenance workers. We're down to three. We're down to three people for 18 buildings, 161 apartments. How is that possible? We don't, they don't have the manpower. They won't hire the manpower. And, and the people are suffering behind it. You can't fix anything if you're not hiring anyone. You know, we've talked to families with sick children. And I've asked the mayor for an apology, and he said a joint apology, because yet again, it is a city, state, and federal problem. We need a, a try, a, a solution of the three. three of, uh, all three entities have to step up. And can you imagine having, I guess, the small children, I have small children myself, and not knowing if you have lead or not in your home? Mm -hmm. This is the reality for so many families in our city. That's unacceptable. Right. It, it, this is the worst aspect, because it is damage that is uh, perhaps permanent. Yes, uh, yes, Catherine Garcia yes. um, is a good sanitation commissioner, 
I was surprised she was selected. She has apparently been doing lead abatement at NYCHA as part of her sanitation responsibility. I don't really know how they go together. And she has said this is her number one priority. We will see. But they have to eliminate the lead in these apartments. I actually think that number is bigger than what you uh, said there. No, I think under the federal deal, under the mm -hmm. deal with HUD, uh, NYCHA has a 20 20 year deadline for abating all lead based paint years. in complexes. That is 20 years. Outrageous. 20 years. outrageous. That's outrageous. 20 years, really? 50% I mean, in 10. It's, it, it's, it's a slap in the face that they give us some. It's a slap in the face that they, um, from now, from Stan, uh, Stan leaving, we go from Alzheimer's to, um, to garbage. Mm. Is you, you put someone from the sanitation, that's garbage. What are you saying, that we're garbage? Because Stan, when I first saw Stan, the poor man was shaking so bad, I said, oh, Lord, he will probably catch a heart attack. So from Alzheimer's, we go to garbage. Now, there's, what are you something, there's something wrong with the numbers. I think in 2017, Mayor de Blasio reported only four kids were testing positive mm -hmm. for lead poisoning. Mm -hmm. And the following year, that number jumped to 1,160. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And we believe this more. We believe so where's the more, transparency? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, more. We, we had a former chair of, of NYCHA who lied about the number of inspections and and that were not jail. done. And now we have a mayor saying suddenly four to 1,500? It's not acceptable it's, whatsoever. And I, like I said, I don't think that number is correct. I think it's more. Higher. Other, yes, yes, and other right. nonprofits that have been reviewing this have made it much higher. And you're right, 20 years is unacceptable. It should be right now priority, just like pre-K. It's amazing how fast pre-K got done. One yeah, year, right? Yeah, and I asked Secretary Carson about it because he's a doctor, and he said that it, it did break his heart to hear how many children were sick from lead and poisoned by lead in our city. And it is, like you said, Gail, it is a lifetime. It changes the child's life and, and the family's life. And um, you never get that back. That's unacceptable. You never get that back. And I, I'll never forget the families that we have profiled and um, we'll continue to tell their stories because it's important for people to know that this is happening in New York City. Okay, let's take a break. I want to talk about the heat, not water. We're still in the so glad you height of, of winter and yes. we've had the Arctic blast already and still a lot of apartments without heat and I'm getting a call right now. Okay, <laughs> tell us about it after the break. I will. We'll be right yeah. back. <laughs> Back again with Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, Tenant President Carmen Canonis, and my colleague uh, uh, Monica Morales. So during the break, Monica received the call. We want to talk about the crisis in, in public housing and the heat, no heat, no hot water. And during the taping of the show, you just have a call right now. You have someone on the line? Yeah, Roxy Reed is from the Castle Hill Houses, and she's on the phone right now. Can you hear her? Roxy, yes, you, you don't have heat? Good morning, how are you? Hi. Um, one of the buildings don't have heat right now. 2175 Lacombe. 2175 um, Lacombe doesn't have heat. How the long? Uh, one of the residents, I'm standing here talking to her right now, and she said it's almost about a month. They haven't had a heat month. in that building. A month, a month. no heat. And it's supposed to get and very cold this weekend. Yeah, Avenue. Okay, 2175. So if the city's watching, 2175. Okay. We'll, we'll, we're on Lacombe. it, okay? Yeah, look home. You got it. Okay. Okay. Rest assured, Monica will make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> Monica, we have to make it Monica, we got a lot of garbage around here where we got one now truck she's... that's picking up the garbage and sell them around here. Man. Yeah, I know. We got to come back for the garbage, too. The garbage. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. The we're Monica, on it. We're on it. Monica. So I'm going to go to the lady's house and, and see how what other tenants that didn't have no heat. And I'm going to get back to you and let you know. Okay, tell okay. us. Okay, very good. Let's, Thanks, let's Roxy. Let's get a little more on that because, Monica, yeah. you recently yeah. visited the Castle Hill houses mm -hmm. in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. and, and you found there's an inconsistency. Some apartments have heat, some don't. Yeah, Many of them do. don't. That's what they And do. let's take a look at your report. Thanks. Yeah. Residents calling me, telling me they didn't have no heat in here for since almost a week now. And people with babies and the senior citizens in here, what's up with that? Families at 535 Havemeyer Avenue need our help. They say they are freezing. Why do you sit with the little blankie like that? Because I'm cold. I'm freezing. We found Rosa Ayola under a blanket and her three-year-old grandson Darnell too. Rosa says she hasn't had heat in about a week and a half. And she says she's filed complaints, but still has no heat. What do you want to tell NYCHA? NYCHA to do something about it. You know we checked. Yep, ice cold. I shouldn't be able to put my hand on this. It should be hot. 
I shouldn't be able to do this, and I can. Put my hand right there. Judy Jones is in the same building on the same floor and is frustrated and cold, too. I'm sick right now because of it. This you angry? Yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad. My son don't want to come back over here because it's too cold. He's going to stay at his uncle's house. He don't want to come here. You're, you're starting to cry. Yeah, because this, this is for real. So we reached out to NYCHA, and they're on it. Meantime, NYCHA says they're increasing heating response teams, adding more staff at the customer contact center, and opening one warming center in every borough. What do you want to tell NYCHA? They need to fix this damn, this, this thing, this, this problem, because this, this, is not, this is not good. This is not good. You can hear the anger there, and justifiably, yeah. no heat, no hot water, with temperatures dropping below 20 a couple of days this year, and we have a, a very cold uh, weekend coming up. Why, why in this day and age can't we get that fixed? I, I don't know, Marvin. It's not just money. It's also management. They do not have... Mismanagement. Yeah, management that does management. not responsive. We were talking earlier that, with all due respect to NYCHA, whatever's going on up top does not go yeah. on on the ground. Sometimes you have a good manager, but I can tell you many developments where there are not. The tickets, in other words, say for instance you have no heat, you put a ticket in, you have uh, mold in your apartment, etc. You put the ticket in, and I swear we have so many people yeah. who come to our office, the ticket has been closed, the problem has been fixed, it is not fixed. So you have to, that's a management issue. That's not a money issue, that that's is, a management issue. I, hallelujah, that's exactly what I've been seeing over and over again, is that the top People at the top are telling me one thing, and then I go out there myself, and I see something completely different. Now, here, uh, part, part of this deal with the federal government, it calls for a deal gives NYCHA until again, a couple of years from now, 2024, five years from now, to ensure that no more than 15% of apartments see temperatures drop below legal limits in the winter. That leaves, <laughs> if I count my percentages is right, if you're talking about NYCHA, that's like 60,000 apartments. Yes. Right. Yes. That's not appropriate. This, uh, I mean, if it's Catherine Garcia or wh whoever's in charge, the mayor included, these numbers are not light at the end of the tunnel, as you, per as you suggested. These numbers are way too far in advance, but they need money. This is a money issue right here. What about the money from the governor? Isn't he withholding some funds that are due for NYCHA? Yeah, he, he wants to know what they're going to do with it. But, Carmen, I'm really interested in hearing what you have to say about all this. Because, it, because I, I'm just so tired of the same thing over and over and over. Everybody promises this money, but the money never comes through. Never comes through. We're never going to fix these problems because, the, first of all, New York City Housing Authority has no right to even uh, have that money. Not with the management that they, not with the management that they have. The mayor and all of them have mismanaged, have this corruption going on. There's people stealing money. I mean, even TPA funds. There's so much money missing, and they're not talking about that. Let's talk about the money that's missing. Where is that money? They've stolen so much money that if they would backtrack, we would have all these repairs fixed. Now, Carmen, you alluded to something, you alluded to something earlier that, that there's going to be further action. That action include a tenant strike? Actually, right now, um, actually on February 22nd, I am having a forum. Uh, it's going to be at 127 West of Humphrey Street um, at Grace Methodist Church. And we are organizing all presidents so that we can close the street. We need to okay. shut the city down. Now, I, as I, I'm hearing all of you. It, it doesn't sound like there's any immediate fix. Is that correct? Well, I think there is no immediate fix to the extent necessary on lead, no. heat, mold, elevators, and bed bugs and rats, unless we have more money and a better management. On the other hand, thanks to Vito and others, there is better work plans for those who are working, not enough, and I think there are some improvements. This is not a plan that addresses the needs of the residents. There is a sense of urgency that needs to happen here. And I think you, you mentioned it, the rent strike. Queensbridge Houses is talking about it. Okay. Um, so Ann Carmen's organizing. Tenant Association presidents are angry. They want a seat at the table. Stay tuned. No easy fix. Thank no. you. Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, Thank Carmen Canonas, and Monica Morales. You got it. And you can catch her. Monica makes it happen.
Okay, that'll do it for our program for this week. If you have any questions, comments, wish to see the broadcast again, log on to our website at pix11.com slash newsclosup. I'm Marvin Scott. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, everyone.